So I would like to invite uh, Mr. Asad Ali Sheikh Saab to present his work, his experiences, his research work uh, to the participant uh, of uh, today's conference. Uh, Mr. Asad Ali Sheikh. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me share the screen. Uh, science, uh, share screen, Banjo. Sai Bilkul Maong, the Italy Campo. Okay. Are you able to see the screen? Sir, Bilkul, Bilkul, the Super. Thank you very much, uh, 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 honorable uh, uh, members and all the uh, those who are watching. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Sandvian, for inviting me. Uh, uh, I saw a lot of uh, good educationist, experienced faculty members, and they they briefed a lot about the uh, the scenario which is going on, the pre-COVID, the post-COVID, the skill-based learning and the knowledge-based learning, which is uh, uh, in outside the country or inside the country. So, Mujo uh, Jiko topic kahe, Ajo Uahe, basically how uh, we can utilize uh, our higher education our skills as a tool to uh, upgrade or build our career or those who are uh, like, you know, the students, youth, undergraduate, and they want to go abroad for the uh, higher education. So what they are missing, what, because uh, uh, I'm the practical example, uh, what I was thinking when I was in Pakistan, to get uh, admitted in uh, any university uh, outside the country abroad. What are the hurdles? Uh, because it was a, uh, not a, you know, a very easy journey. It is a, a very hard and difficult, but not impossible. When you get it, so it's look like very easy. The Asanjo Ajjo Joko topic, Munjo Joko select hala, wo overseas path ahe with higher education and of course, uh, the skill is very important in that. The uh, already uh, uh, you know about the skills and the importance of skills in the higher education, which my uh, fellow speakers already describe about that. But ma hikri gal kando halaite jane mo apply kyo hoyo when I was in uh, sin. Uh, like there's a big giant asan uh, the uh, education <coughs> abroad is very difficult apply financial hurdles in you there is a lot of things obviously but there is a way uh, to go on and on and on the the ability uh, skill uh, use one of knowledge effectively uh, readily and execution of performance is very important uh, in this. I move to the Chua, especially uh, from uh, our country. Uh, there is a, a lot of uh, good institution. Uh, as we know, uh, we have a, a IBA Sakhar and the other universities, IBA Karachi and all, all sin. There is a, a good teacher, good institute, and the people, every people having a skills, there is no any doubt. But the utilization of a skill at the right time, that is, that is going to be an a exam uh, for those who are uh, build their career abroad or going uh, of education. So uh, now how we can uh, uh, coop our uh, you know, the due share in the world technologies and how we can uh, uh, do get the more skills. So uh, first of all, we are starting from essential life skills, uh, which is very important, not for the education purpose, not for the career building purpose. It is, it is for all uh, purposes in your life. It's day by day, uh, the operation which is going on 
the communication and interpersonal skills, which are uh, very important and teamwork, which because uh, the people uh, they are doing a job or they are doing building their career, they are uh, in any site of education, like doing the masters or PhD program, how we can uh, communicate with each other, how we can build the trust, how we can do the teamwork, and obviously in your life or uh, in any part of uh, your career, it is uh, necessary how you can resolve your issues, problem resolving techniques. These, these are the skills which is very important in your uh, future. So we are now going to our topic, how uh, you can, uh, if you are a, uh, as a student, you have a uh, undergraduate degree in Pakistan uh, from any university, what, what do you think if you are applying for the master's program, especially uh, I'm talking about in US, how you can uh, go and uh, step by step you can move on. So uh, basically, uh, if you have a uh, undergraduate degree and you are trying to apply for the master's degree program in the uh, US uh, in any university, so first of all, making sure that you have a 16 years of education and you are applying for the master's uh, program which you have already undergraduate degree because if there is a similar a master's degree program which uh, beneficial for you for the future admission and accepting in the university. Always apply to the university more than one and uh, if there is a more than one university you apply and you got the acceptance letter from three or four universities. So you have always choice to select your university according to your plan, feasibility, economic conditions and uh, everything which is uh, important uh, in your future uh, to live over there. And what we are lacking in the in this whole process because uh, I'm uh, telling you I was uh, I'm not uh, currently uh, serving in the university uh, when I was applied uh, for the my master's program in MS in 2006 2016 and my MS program started in 2017 so uh, it was the time when we saw that uh, uh, how we can get the admission. So uh, come on to the admission process. Uh, I applied for the admission in master's program and I did my IELTS in 2014 and it was expired in 2016. So at that time when I applied, so there was a mandatory for the master's program, we done the IELTS. But when I go to the university, I come to know that uh, Pakistan is among the those countries uh, where uh, you can exempt your uh, IELTS uh, for the admission purpose only if your mode of language is English from your uh, past university. So I was glad to hear that and uh, I got the certificate from the university from Pakistan. There is a mode of uh, language is English and I produced to the the admission department and they happily uh, accept uh, my um, admission and uh, further move on then I utilize uh, my language skill. When I inducted in the university uh, I started uh, uh, the, the first classes then I saw on the notice board uh, there was a uh, you know, uh, vacancy for the admission office uh, as a bilingual admission uh, officer, which they required at that time. It was only two, three days uh, I joined my university, but bilingual, I thought that, okay, I'm bilingual, there is no any uh, uh, problem, but I, I know English, I know Sindhi, and uh, I come and grew up from Pakistan, so understand and speak and everything Urdu very well. 
and came from Dubai at that time. So, uh, uh, how I utilize my language as a tool to work in the university as, a, as an admission officer. I served more than one and a half year uh, during my MS program. So the, the teacher, uh, the interviewer asked me and uh, I briefed them that uh, there is a lot of chunk of students, those the university is missing from the, those area, especially from the India, Pakistan, uh, Bangladesh, where these languages are spoken. So uh, I served as an admission officer. In that uh, admission officer uh, period, uh, in uh, one and a half year, I saw a lot of people, especially youth from Pakistan, especially from Sin, they are applying for the admissions, but uh, not they are interested in the admission to come over there even though we are trying to solve their problems, solve their admission issues, they always having a, uh, the first question that how we can uh, afford the fees and uh, how we can uh, come over there. Some say, I don't have an IELTS, uh, I don't have an SAT, but these things can be exempted if we are well prepared, if we uh, have a courage to do something so we can come and we can uh, join to build our career and for the higher education as well. Asad Saab, you have five more minutes. Oh, okay. So uh, we already discussed about uh, the degree and the qualification uh, uh, for the admission process in the, uh, and what we are seeing in the current train, uh, I'm going to the, uh, the skills and the, the degree program. Like in the US, there is a every year 65,000 uh, H1B visa, they're allotted to the, those who are uh, highly skilled persons, graduate and the masters from the, uh, the USA. So uh, there is only one to 2% of uh, those visas which going to our country. People are not focusing uh, to how to get, they don't know about, they don't have any idea to how to induct in the US market. Only few people, uh, I think it's uh, less than 1% people know and uh, uh, they are working on the path of uh, getting these uh, uh, the visa and build their career outside the, uh, the country. So uh, here is the, the process which is started uh, in the February every year. There is a 65,000 quota for H1B visa. If there is a uh, applicants are more, more than 65,000. So they are going for the lottery. And if uh, uh, anyone selected uh, from the higher education and skill, those having uh, uh, followed the all process. So, you know, every year there are the three companies uh, that uh, one is the, uh, the Tata and the other one is uh, Deloitte. Deloitte. <coughs> and um, the third one, they are all Indian companies getting the chunk of like 40, more than 40,000 visas and all going uh, to the, uh, the, our neighbors. But we are getting only 1% of visa uh, from the US on the technologies. Currently these uh, on the screen, if you see, these are the top demands, not all related to the IT. There is a finance, there is a, uh, especially the home health, nursing assistant in the, if you are building your career, it is not necessary. You are going towards IT, you are going towards only the finance. There is a lot of other ways to uh, utilize your skills and uh, utilize and check the uh, current demand, what is in the, uh, especially in the US. And I'm uh, going through uh, straight to the suggestions. What is lake which we saw here? There is no any uh, overseas center. 
I think universities from, especially from Sindh, if they want their students go abroad for the higher education or build their career, the HEC or the universities make one facilitation center, which uh, allow and help the students to getting their due share in the admissions and facilitate the students pre and the post admission and in the, the career counseling, especially for H-1B visa, it is not uh, easy to uh, you know, get from the Pakistan. But if there is any facil facilitation center or companies like these big giants, the Dialog, the, the Tata companies, we are not compare or uh, doing the same company at the one time. But if we started from the basic, from the start, so we can slowly, gradually, we can reach them. At least if, if we go for uh, H-1B visa or the, the career path or admission process, maybe the first year or first six months, only we are successful for the 10 persons, 10 students, or uh, in one year, only the, the 20. But the next year, it's a growing path. And we should and our universities and the vice, respected vice chancellor, they, they should realize this. And USA and Europe having a very, very good market for our youth. So they, they utilize uh, this program. Thank you, Adamashut. Thank you very much, Asa Sheikh Saab. I know it is very early in the morning in Houston, but uh, thank you. We kept you awake all night. 